I am with the Center for E-Learning. You can just call me Kenneth. So we will be here. I will be here for two days. But the purpose is not to, I don't want to keep you here for two days. We have lectures to attend and other meetings. So you can come in and go out anytime you like. But today, in the first session today, I will be covering the basics required for audit, for one, what they call the 1732. In the next, uh, tomorrow, I will help you individually if you need helping with your individual programs or your courses. Okay, I will help you to modify or change based on your requirement of 1732. Okay, in addition to that, I will also introduce you to some tools for content development. How many of you have uh, developed lectures using a screen casting system, recording? I think only doctor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Have you all used screen casting? Screen casting system to record the lecture on the screen? I think you all have used. How many of you have? Because we will show you how to screen cast and record your lecture. Okay, so when we look at blended learning, right? I look at it this way. So in blended learning, I have prepared the slides, but we just I prefer to use whiteboard. So blended learning, basically we have the basic requirement, which is 1732, which is the, the one actually represents your course synopsis, which is now your table four. You already migrated to table four, so it will be table four earlier, it was table three. Okay, the second one will be the content, which is uh, the seven, which are seven lecture notes. This lecture note can be in two forms. It can be in the form of your PowerPoint slides, converted to PDF, okay? Or it can be in the form of lecture, which you deliver as a video instructional online, using your recording system, okay? Then you have the three, which is the three uh, activities. It can be in the form of forum, it can be in the form of a discussion group, or it can be in the form of any other interaction with the student. But the key point is that you need to park it under the right uh, icon. And then the two will be the assignment. Assignment means something which you deliver to the student, like a like an exercise, and they deliver it back to you. Okay, so that's the one seven three two. So we'll basically go through the process now. Smart to UMS is currently available in this format, but it's going to be shifted. It's going to be translated or converted to Smart to Smart UMS V three. It's going to migrate to that. So in this semester, next semester, you'll have to migrate to. The smart version 3. Now, smart v3 is basically the same thing. The layout is the same. It only has more uh, security features, enhanced security like password protection. And it also has the feature like the big blue button, which allows you to live broadcast your videos. You can live, you can send, make your lecture live, which is not there in the current system. So if your students are not in the class, you can actually have them sitting somewhere else. You can monitor them and deliver your content via smart. Okay, so that's the way it is done. Okay, so, so basically what we are going to cover today first, I'm going to go into the basics, which is the site setup, the setup of your system. And I have constructed a site for you uh, to show how it's done in step-by-step -step fashion, okay? So I'll go into that, we'll do a live demo. So if you all have your courses already, you all have your online? Yes. So you all already have functional courses? Okay, so I will show you how to do the basics first before we go into content. Okay, Zul, you can go into my website, yours, right? Go to, go to the blended learning course development, call your formal. This is yours, right? Yeah. Just go to formology. formology. Okay, formology. Okay, this goes to the BLC where. Uh, okay, so no, we use this, go to the BLC well, call. Okay. And then we have the course. To step by step. Okay. So we are going to start from scratch. So if you all are, most of you all are more advanced. So some of you all are less, right? Some some are new. Some are more advanced. So we'll basically start from the basics. How to develop the website. So this is what when you are registered at the web. When you are registered, basically the procedure is you will give the your program coordinator will give all your data to BPA, right? Is that correct? Then the BPA data is replicated by JTMK. JTMK will come out with this format for each course. So when you receive it, it's basically blank, a blank format. What you need to do is you have to modify things inside, like adding or suppose you change your lecturers, you can add it directly in the system. So let's start step by step. So what you need to do is first, you will receive this, you have to turn your editing on. That's the most important thing. Okay? That's the first one. Okay, so we wait for it, the system will respond. And you can see it's in the date format. Some lecturer prefer to use the date weekly format, okay? Some lecturer prefer to teach by topic. 
Okay, and this is very important when you look at table four because in table four you re you refer to topics. There is a section on topics and learning outcome. So each topic linked to a certain LO. That's very important. You can also have it in uh, in the date format like this, but weekly format what they call the week. But you need to look at again at the LO, the learning outcome for each module. So I'm trying to make it as comprehensive as possible. So later on, if you have audit, you can actually print out and show that your teaching and learning outcomes, LOs are related to your course CLO. So if you all are new, right? If you any of you all are new, new lecture mostly are senior. So, so we basically have the program objective and then you have the course outcomes. So you, your course learning outcomes should map back to your program objective. So that's what we do. So okay, let's start with this. So what you need to do, the first thing is you need to add your uh, course synopsis. Okay, okay. So this is where lecture, all the lecturer have everything in, but they fail because of that course synopsis. Not because they didn't put it in; they put it under the wrong icon. Okay. So let's do the first step, which is changing. We uh, we follow the weekly format, and we add an activity or resource. Usually, the course synopsis you can add in the first week. Okay. Or we can add it. So I just add an activity of resource or resource. So the student will see the course synopsis. Okay. The course synopsis. You can see it right there. Course synopsis. Okay, you add. So in course synopsis, you can only add PDF files. So you can't add other. You cannot add Word or any other file. Don't try to upload it. Otherwise, it will not. The system will not track that course synopsis icon. Okay. And the reason why it's done is like this: when the ministry audit, they will see the icon, respective icon, on the PHP server. So if the icon is not active, they will say it's incomplete. Of course, they, then after they will go in deeper if they need to find detail. But the main thing is course synopsis. So you have your course synopsis training. Usually, it's a very good practice here because the idea of the course synopsis is not just for formality; it's to uh, introduce the students to what they need to learn in that course. Okay. So upon completion of this course, you will be achieving this. Okay. So you need to transfer that from your table four into this. So you should say. Upon completion of this course, you should complete one, two, three, four. So you have all these in your course synopsis. The next thing you need to do is to add a PDF file. So you can go down and add PDF file. So Zul will. Upon completion of this course, just put learning outcomes, mm -hmm. course learning outcomes. Okay. So we try to make the system in such a way. So my my aim is to actually make the system so good, so I mean perfect in terms of audit. So if the auditor asks you for record, you have all the things in your system. Okay, you make it that way. So this is your record of your entire teaching and learning. So your auditor will say yes, that's it. So learning outcome, and then you can drag and drop file from here. Okay, so you add a PDF file. So usually in the system, right, we have the difficulty. Sometimes you try to add the file. This is the this is our technical problem, which is faced by lecturer. They try to add. They cannot add. So the best solution for the smart tool, you drag and drop. Just drag and drop. Don't try to add. So I just add any file. So so just add a random file. Yeah, just add. Okay, it'll upload. Okay, so it upload there. And then you change to display automatic, everything is okay. Okay, go down, go down to display, go to the display section. Okay, display, go to the display, the scroll down. Okay. Okay. This is very important. You need to click on force download icon. You know why? Because student will say we uh, the lecturer did not give us the table four. But the, it's the right of the student to have the table for legally. So you put it on first download. So when the student click, they have to download. <laughs> Others they will say no because the, if they said they did not receive it, the uh, log is the activity log. It says download. <laughs> so then you can if the student say oh the lecturer never said so, but to protect yourself, make it first download. Okay, remember this icon. So don't just display it there. They will say oh we didn't see it, but you won't know. There's no evidence. So you click first download, and then you click save and display. Okay. Because you have to be careful, protect yourself also in the system. Because with e-learning, many of the students say, "Oh, we never saw it. We never did." But if it's first download, you will see. It's clear the first download. How, how they see? It? How does see it? When when they click first download, means they acknowledge the receipt. They, they, they download. Notif the the first download will come. So when you see your course file, right? There's a course log. Actually, there's a course logs over there. You can see that how many students download. Other, otherwise, you'll never know. They will say, "You have have you seen the table for?" They'll say, "Oh, we never saw." They will say, "We just," but you won't have evidence of that. But if you if they see it, they have to click download. 
So it's a good practice in the first session, ask them to click and download their template. So then you have evidence that they download, they are aware of what the course is about and what their learning outcomes are. So you are protected in that sense of the academic sense. Okay, so you have the course, so he, he has made multiple, you can remove one, so it's not coming. Okay. Okay, so now you met the first condition, which is your course, uh, the one, the one is the course synopsis, okay. Now you need to add activity or resource. So usually in the first lecture, we give an introductory lecture, and then that's, we explain to them over table four and what they need to achieve. Then we go on to the next lecture, so we can add an activity or resource rule, you can add the, you add the count resource. Okay, go down to resource, down the resources. Okay, so this actually counts among the sev uh, seven, okay, one seven. So you can add any of this as seven. So the first thing which you can add is a book. It usually can be a link to a book. Don't upload the book directly because if we upload a book, we are violating copyright. So copyright book, copyright, don't upload anything. And then the server will not. Oh, free book. Free book can, can, free book can. Okay, but if you do free book, uh, you have to acknowledge the author and check the licensing. Okay, are you all aware of Creative Commons licensing? Okay, so some are aware, everyone is aware of CC Creative Commons, Creative Commons, right? Those who attended are aware. But Creative Commons is basically a licensing which allows you to repurpose uh, our work. Repurpose means reuse the work. So usually you have CC BY. So what Prof mentioned is with CC BY, then you can upload here. It's no problem, you should display it here. Provided you acknowledge the author of that book. Okay, so that's what here. So you have book, you have, this is course synopsis which you have done. You have file, you have folder, you have LMS content package, you have label, page, and URL. Okay, you have all these ones. I'll, I'll go through them briefly. So file is basically a lecture content, which can be in the PowerPoint format or PDF format. Okay, now I suggest to you one thing very important when it comes to your lecture note. Your lecture note, is basically your creation, okay? You are the creator of your content. Now, the, what happens is that earlier, when we upload the P, uh, PPT file in our lecture note, the student can download. Tomorrow, if they are working somewhere else as a lecturer, they can reuse your content without acknowledging you, okay? So then you lose your content. So in today's, what you call the age where you have digital identity, it's very important to save your content in a repository. So that's why we suggest to you to convert your PowerPoint into PDF. Never give student PPT. Of course, they can reconvert, that is there. But the thing is, you give it online as PowerPoint. Uh, sorry, as PDF, PDF of the PowerPoint. You convert it into PDF. Upload it here. Two things. One is the capacity of the server. Secondly, is you're protecting yourself. And to protect yourself even more, if you want to really take precaution, you go to the repository. We have a UMS repository. So you can show the repository. OER.UMS.edu.my. Okay. So today we are here for two days. If you don't have a repository account, we can help you to uh, log in and make a repository account. This repository contains all the possible content which you can store. You can store your e-books here, you can store your lecture note, you can store everything here. It will remain here as long as UMS server is functional. Means we will replicate or protect your information is duplicated. This is a repository. So you can see your IBTP. This is a repository. So take note of this repository. If you need to have an account, you'll need to email Zul because this is not in our UMS, uh, it's not with our UMS password, single sign-on. This is a, requires a specific uh, password and ID. So you have all your content here, okay? So you can click on anything, this one, just click. Ah, just click, Dr. Lewis. Okay, so you have, he has put in his book, okay? Okay, now I'll tell you the reason why the repository is very important. So this is Dr. Liu's book, he has put it into a repository. So it's flip book, he has put there and then you can see it. Now the reason why you, your repository is very important is because the repository is reflected in your Google Scholar citation. So this is why you, so won't you put in your information here? So you make, you have 14 lecture note, right? So you make 14 lecture note, convert to PDF, upload to the repository. And then your Google Scholar will reflect your 14 lecture note. Okay, so it will be recorded, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Can anyone just like go and click and download? Yeah, that is the, our repository is based on the principle of the uh, CCBY or Creative Commons uh, open access license. So basically you can, the license is, can you go down to that? Okay, look at this. It says CC, this is a specific licensing format. So it says CC, BY, NC, and then e, uh, and Cheryl, I'll explain to you. CC means 
you need to be acknowledged. So the, the work there is acknowledged. So this repository is registered on a global database. Okay? So everything is people download, upload, everything is tracked in a global database. So it reflects CCBY means uh, it needs to be uh, acknowledged and you need to be cited. So BY is you. This is BY. The small icon here is you, yourself. So that is you as the author. NC means it cannot be commercialized and share alike means it should be shared in the whole content as it is. So I'll give you an example. So suppose you have CC, right? You made your lecture note. What this means is when they use your lecture note, they need to acknowledge you as the author. Okay, so your name will be there. They cannot commercialize your lecture note. So you can, but they cannot because they are not the life creator. And they, can, they have to share it alike. Means your data has to be, or your lecture note has to be shared in the format as it is. And if they share it, they have to follow the same license. So this is very important because sometimes medical data, right? They will show only partial data and they'll make conclusion. So they will say, they'll cite you, I said, oh, in your paper, I said, but in share alike means they have to show it as such. So they have to show the whole data set. Okay? I mean, like, uh, for example, like now our lecture notes, hmm. they're not available for anyone yeah, to yeah, access. Yeah. But once we put them in, Yep. Will anyone be able to access it? They will access it, to provide to a search for it. If they, they, yeah, if they search for it. So you can see it appear on a Google search. The repository is basically designed to increase your global visibility. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you don't want it to be seen in the global space, don't put it in the repository. Yeah. Oh. Because, like, how would the yeah. um, lecture notes like, increase our Google citation? Okay, so basically, what happens when you are in the normal sense, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're, we are living in the world in which we have the digital, like we create digital note, right? But every time you put it here, you get a digital identity. Means you have a metric which is tracking you. So if you, like just as you have Facebook likes, this one actually tracks the number of downloads and then it improves your digital uh, signature. See how it works differently. So maybe in the future, they will actually track you based, now we are using citation. We are assuming that in the future, you'll have uh, tracking based on your digital uh, signature. How many people download your low notes? Yeah, one last yeah, sure. You so just continue asking. You just talk like normal. Google citation profile. Yeah. It comes out with all our um, mm. details that like mm. we've written, yeah. and then all of the publications yeah. that yeah. we actually published, yeah. like peer review paper journals, yep. and, yep. all of this. and then lectures that the, we. It, it will come as lecture. It'll, it'll come in the lecture yeah. note. Actually, I will show you <laughs> if you can show. But mine is embarrassing because my my index is very low. <laughs> just show my Google Scholar how it comes. Just show my Google. Just put scholar.google.com. Mine is very embarrassing, so I don't want to show you, but, <laughs> but I show you, huh? So scholar.google.com, Google Scholar. That is Malu, if I show my, okay, just show the, my profile. Okay, go to my profile. Okay, click there. Okay, okay. Okay, go down, go down. Okay, see, huh? so one minute, huh? so, okay, okay, go up, so, go down, go down, go down. So you can see the, okay, go, go. Okay. lecture, lecture note will be there, go up. Go down, zoom, zoom. Or you can go by year. Don't go by citation. Go by year. Sort by year. Um, you can sort by year. Uh, by year, click, click year. By year, tahun. Okay. Okay. Go down. Go down. Okay. Ah, see ya. So basically, what happens is that okay. Click there. Quality management, industrial biotechnology. Right. Click. Okay. Now this will connect back to the repository. It will come in your system, and then you click on that. Click. It go. It should go back to repository. Ah, it goes into the repository and then you click here. So you can click on the handle down the content. Okay. Content, yeah. Okay. Click. Okay. Then you have your slide here. So so you see when the student clicks, every time you get a click, it'll click in your repository. And you can actually get a data log if you ask the JTMK for the data log. So use this to protect yourself. Because today in today's but earlier, right, twenty years ago, no one was citation was not Important H index, we didn't have, then suddenly now H index. So tomorrow, if, uh, the, according to the prediction of the techno TEL industry, this will become your identity, digital content which you created. There's only one thing which you need to be careful when you do this. You need to be ensure that your content is original or from, it should be created from other CCBY content. Otherwise, it opens door for legal action, okay, based on usage. Okay? Yeah. So this, uh, doing this is entirely your choice. Okay, don't, don't make the, yeah, that's why people will, uh, if you make slight mistake, right, copyright, then they can use it to bring down your academic career. Yeah. So don't do that. So, so I put in everything here, so it comes into that. Of course, no one cites it, but it shows up in the, in the system. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, can we also in, uh, deposit 
the link to our PDF file? Uh, uh, yeah, you can deposit. In yeah, Google yeah. Document like PDF. File. Uh, Google document actually that's what the repository has one issue okay so you can see in repository right you need to upload a PDF file yeah you can you can have the content in Google as well but you need to have a cover page inside the repository if you all need specific training on repository loading we can give you tomorrow or day whenever you are free but I'm showing you the repository because it's your avenue for uh, documenting your work that's why. So we are trying to make sure that you get uh, credit for what you do. See, you spend uh, maybe one or two days <laughs> making a lecture, and then there's no credit for it. Okay, you are preparing it for two, three days. I'm sure what we have experienced, right? Three, four days you prepare the lecture, and then no credit. But here, once it's here, it's basically giving you a signature. That's my work. Okay, so you can put it here, and then we'll we can help you to link. So once it's here, all you need to do is put a link in your smart tool. For example, if I want to put the lecture back, I just put it in the smart tool and the link goes back. Okay. So that's about the repository. So we go back to the smart tool. Smart tool. Okay. So let's see the thing which we do. The file, the folder is nothing more than a compilation of file. Try and not, don't use this function unless you have multiple files because the folder will have, uh, I mean you will have, may, student may have problem downloading. This is the LMS content package, which are other things like SCOM files, which we don't use. There are, SCOM file means a lecture in which you can stop and start the lecture at any given point, and the student can be assessed. So these are SCOM packages. This is the label, which is only used as a separator. And then you have the page, which is linking to a web page, which you have created in Google Sites. Okay. Some lecturers earlier, they don't want to use smart ums They use Schoology and other platform. But you can insert the link to the page in that. Okay, and the last one is the URL. URL is a universal resource loca locator. You can add uh, pages or text inside the slide. Okay, I will show you how it's done one by one. Okay, so we'll just focus first on adding the file. So we'll so just click file and add. Just add. Okay. okay, so you have the file. Okay, just add a file. Just add any file. So any any PDF, the same PDF also will be okay. Should be okay. Just drag and drop a PDF file. Just drag and drop. Just put the lecture topic or draft policy, anything. Just put lecture topic there, and then just drag and drop. You can say I have a PDF file. Okay. Okay. So this will be the file. Okay. When you uh, when you do the name, right? You can name it as lecture one, or you can name it as topic two, topic one or lecture one. But remember something. When you put up the lecture note, right? Uh, most of the thing which I should do earlier is please refer to the lecture note. <laughs> Actually, this is what I write in the introduction, but it should not be that way. It, it should be an introduction. This lecture will introduce you to the concept of so and so. And then you put in the, upon completion of this lecture, you should be able to demonstrate this. This should be in the introduction, this part. Don't just display, and you need to click this display description on the course page. Okay, so we'll make it as lecture one, and you put uh, right as well introduction, just write introduction, introduction, and CLO, just go down, one more, one more down, CLO, course learning outcome. So the CLO should be stated in this. If you have an assessment tool which you'll be using, you and then you can write your method of assessment, go below, Zul, click one more, click, okay, assessment. So it'll tell the student, this lecture is about this concept, this is what you need to learn, and this is your course assessment for this lecture will be in this session. For example, will it be a classroom assessment activity, will it be an outdoor activity, or so on and so forth. SS, A S S E S S. Just right click and get the SS, SS, SS assessment. S S A S E S S S S assessment. Assessment. Okay. Put double S. Okay. Okay. So then you. But what you need to click is display the description on the course page. Okay. So you must remember something about the web format. So uh, when a student sees it on the desktop it will appear like this but we are the most of the students are using mobile phone okay in mobile phone they will be scrolling through it 
So the new version, which is uh, 3.0, the Smart Tree, will have a scrolling function. So you can scroll through the web page. So usually nowadays in the modern world, we are using Angular uh, format. Angular, which is when you load the web page on your phone, and when you load it on your desktop, it's different. But the, the, the how do you say, the HTML platform can recognize, is it from a phone or is it from a, that? So the new, that's why you need to have all these in the page. So when the student flips, they will see the whole thing in, the, in one line. Okay, as you flip. Otherwise, it becomes like the older websites where everything is like one page loading and then you have to click on links. So that is why we are designing for Angular format. Angular, what is known as the Angular Mirage, or oh, the Mirage format. Okay, inside this, right, you also have the uh, ability to do coding. Okay, I'll just go into briefly. Zul, you can go to the YouTube and take any video on tropical biology, any, any video, just get a video. I'll show them how to introduce the code. Okay, just look on, just put on tropical biology, any, just for example, <coughs> okay, biology, <coughs> just, put, just click and get some video of them and them okay. okay, just click on the, just click and just, just extract the code, okay. Okay, now suppose you have a video which you have created or a video which is on YouTube. You cannot download the video and upload it into the system, but you can do something which is known as hyperlinking. Okay, hyperlinking uh, to that video. What you need to do is again you click on. So I'll go through the step one by. So first you find a video which is relevant to you. It can be your lecture note as well, and you click on share. Okay. Normally when we share, we use we can share on the different platform. We're using just by clicking on the link. But what we need to do is the basic share, which is something known as embed. This is the embed code. Okay. You click on embed code, okay? So this will give you a code, okay? This gives you the code for the video and all the things related to the video, including the size. It tells you the size of the video, the frame of the, so it need to adjust all those. So you don't have to worry about that. You can copy it, okay? You just copy the code. You can copy down there, copy this code, okay? It also allows you to start at specific time. So suppose you have a video of your lecture, which is 45 minutes long. You want to only show the 10 minutes. You can say the time that you start and stop. Okay. Embed. Everything is done, so you have everything in, and then you go back to your smart tool. Okay. Okay. This is one of the button which you should, which you should be very familiar with. It is known as the HTML or the source code button. So you click on toggle toolbar, you will see, and you will see all these things coming up, which is the toggle co the code. Okay. So this allows you to put in the math function, add different uh, like the formulae, math function, code, okay, but what we need to do is go below, go, uh, see hello, go down to the end, go down to the end, okay, go down, enter, okay, now you go back to the HTML, okay, sorry, I just, yes. go back to the HTML button, which is the two brackets, okay, you click there, click there, okay, it will open the window for code, now this is the coding window, you can write code, you can even write programs and insert inside this. Okay, but what we want to do, we want to insert our video. So Zul will press enter and control and paste, control V. So now you have your code for the video. Okay, you just update okay. and wait for a while. So, uh, so your video is already running inside the system. Now when you save and display, go down Zul. So your video is ready, everything is ready, your video is inside, you go down. Okay, and then you, s you do the appearance Zul, the appearance setting. Okay. The automatic pop up just click on okay, see, yeah. automatic. okay so you have uh, different kinds of option in this okay again the same function if you want the student to force them to download the introduction or the lecture note you have to do the first download okay suppose you told them you have to watch the video and you need to report you need first download otherwise it's open or it's pop up pop up usually is not suitable for our browser in the phone because it will pop up and it will close the original window so usually we just use the automatic automatic based on the user's uh, browser selection. Okay, so you, you s always you click display description on the course page. So when the student opens their browser, they will see everything as one single flow. And then you save and display. Save and display, or oh, save and display. Yeah, save and display. S save and display. Save and display, okay. So now you have the first lecture which will be seen like this. Of course the format is because we are using the screen. So you'll see the lecture one, the introduction to the lecture one, the CLO and the assessment. Usually here, right, in the first lecture, you can write, you can put in an introduction to yourself. You all have, anyone of you all have introductory lecture? Uh, about yourself. Oh, I'm Kenneth, I do this work, this is my, do you have a lecture like that about yourself? 
no, no. I will show you how to create. Usually, that's the one which you should put in in the first first lecture. So I am so and so. You can, okay. So that's on all the stuff. Okay, so that's it. So if if you do this seven times, seven lecture, you basically fulfill the n number seven. Okay. So seven doesn't mean your content. You are encouraged to make your own content, but it can be other people's content. Like this is the content already. So it's using because the uh, you see what's happening currently. The current uh, teaching and learning scenario is based on what is known as knowledge aggregator. You see, you, okay, I'll give you an example. You have that Traveloka website. Uh, Traveloka or the they when you key in, you get all the hotel right or the other one which is the hotels.com. It will give you the multiple hotel and then you when you can select. Whichever you want, based on the price. Usually, in the aggregator system, what will happen in the future? The the all your video will will. Uh, for example, you are teaching tropical biology and conservation. So, some somebody search, then they will look through an educational website, and all the video will come in there, and they will select the one which has the highest rating. Uh, so, they'll aggregate the video. So, then in the future, your you will be linked to the aggregator. Okay, Google is basically developing. Uh, so, Google basically gives us everything free. But what they created is a huge database of lectures. So in the future, when you have Google Education, you will they will search for you. You will find your lecture and they, they download and reuse. Okay, so that's the way the system is working in the outside. I mean, in the teaching and learning space. Okay, so that's your lecture. So if you have seven of these, you basically fulfill your seven. Okay, so if you have a difficulty, or I mean, if you're new and then you or you're not having your lecture content ready to upload in the system, you can use this. Uh, one seven three two, okay. And then you have the next one will be the three, right? Three, okay. So three, okay. The three will be your. You can add your forums, okay. Usually for three, right? We add the forum. You can add zone. You just add an activity or resource. Add an activity, okay. So in this one, you have your forum, okay, and you have feedback. So you can use the forum. Forum tool, okay. Usually, what lecturer will do to meet this criteria, right? They will just add three forum randomly. <laughs> Currently, the ministry is not assessing for the forum usage, but if they start assessing for the forum activity, then we have to be careful because currently, so usually we have one forum to be safe, right? One forum at the beginning when you do your lecture one, forum one will be to address questions related to the course, just the whole course. You just make one forum, which will be the first. So, Zul, you try. We'll do it. We'll do it in actuality. We turn on. We add the forum. So, the first one you add here. You add one forum here to the first. Ah, you can add news forum. So, change that news forum. Edit. You change it to forum for activity to course. Edit. Okay. So, you name the forum for questions or query related to uh, the course. The every general about the course. It means what is my assessment? How how many marks for this will be in this question related to the course? Today you have, if you are aware of Amazon Lex, Amazon Lex. Well, I, have you all you have heard of Amazon Lex? Amazon Lex is a chat bot. So what you can do is you can program it with all the common question. Like student asks, how many marks for assignment one? You will program it all, and when the student keys in like how many, pro he will see the answer automatically in Amazon Lex. But you need to program the Amazon Lex. It's basically writing all the possible questions and all the possible answer. Okay, so Amazon Lex, I can do your all tutorial sometime. I will have a IDP on Amazon Lex in which we show you all how to use or program Amazon Lex. Okay, so Mo Moodle auto format and then display description on course page. Just so click on that. Always try and do that. And then attachments and count. Just click here uh, and word count. Okay. So if you want to have a student upload, you can limit the upload. Sometimes people upload things to forum. You use, okay. So then you save and display. The other one you don't have to change. Okay. So that will be your forum. So your forum is there, right? You need to add two more forums in your. Content. So, for example, if you are having the first lecture and then you want to disc have a discussion forum on tropical biology, you just add. Zul. So, you just go down to the first lecture, the Bawa, the Bawa, uh, add here, your Tamba, you just add a forum there. So, here is where you can post your questions on this lecture. Forum should be 3 3, you can add 3 forum. Alternatively, you can add uh, okay, forum. Okay. Here, here is where you can post your questions on. Oh, you can post a question. What are the recent trends in global warming or something? You just post. 
what is what is the can you uh, do some research on recent trend in global warming just uh, do some question research just put a question just leave it to it no it's to be just put question be difficult okay so in the forum you can add things and then you just save okay so this is giving you the in the forum also you can post video for example you can click on your html uh, you just click on your coding so coding the coding coding just click, uh, coding is on right coding click on the coding yeah No, not coding the coding is hang hang okay okay so the forum can also be used for example watch the video which is the current news and and comment on it so uh, see this picture of the uh, eco like this ecosystem and then you comment on it or it can be anything so you can put picture in the forum as well okay so that's what you do so below not yet not yet okay just click here <laughs> yeah then you just control we you will have your video there your HTML code. Oh, it's not there. Just copy. Okay. Okay. Then you update, update, and then you say watch the video and comment on it. Oh, you post your specific question.
sometimes somebody can sit in your place and upload the assignment for you. But usually it can be done, but we can't put that restriction here. So save and display. Usually save and save and display. Save and display. Okay. So then. So, the system is basically based on Moodle, which is user friendly. It will prompt you if you make any mistakes. Don't worry about the wrong uh, keying in the wrong data and all. So, now you have your, so you have assignment one. If you put assignment 2 on under date, you basically fulfill all the criteria for 1732. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, if you want to beautify it, we can we'll go into that how to make it more beautiful and how to add other like other functionality to that. But if you did this, you are basically done. 